Good afternoon, everyone, and you are very welcome to uh, the Teacher Profession Project, where we're trying to share good practice. Um, and we've got a panel here today of guests who have wonderful experience of having student teachers in their schools on placement. Our question today, or our topic, is what makes a great teacher? And working together to get student teachers off to a great start. And before I go any further, I'm going to introduce you to my panel. I'm delighted that they've come here today. I'm going to start with Katrina Keeley, Hello, who's the Vice Principal of St Mary's College, College in Derry. Uh -huh. And Katrina, you're the teacher tutor in the school? Yes, I'm the teacher tutor and I have been for 15 years. My goodness. And yeah. you're also the Vice Principal? I'm Acting Vice Principal, Claire. You have so many roles. <laughs> but as well as that, you're also a history teacher. Yes, I, my degree is history and um, I love the classroom. And yes, I'm a history teacher. Fantastic. So. Already you can see the wealth of experience. Um, I have Jim Matthews, uh, who has had a range of experiences in schools and is now the principal of St Comical's Primary School in uh, Antrim. And you have um, have had a range of students from both St Mary's and other institutions over the years. Yes, and in my past life I was a teacher tutor as well when I was a vice principal in another school. Um, so for quite a number of years, I think almost topping 20 now, I've been responsible for uh, school improvement and teacher placements. Lovely, thank you. Um, on my left, I have Claire Crudden and Claire has been very brave because she's one of our final year students. Your main subject is? Religion. Religion. Um, but you're sharing the student's perspective yes. and we're delighted that you're here because it's sort of slightly intimidating for you representing <laughs> all of the student body, but we're delighted to have you. Yes. And finally, I've got Helena Kelly. And Helena, you're a teaching vice principal yeah. and teacher tutor in a school yeah. in Belfast, yeah. uh, Secret Heart Boys Primary School. Mm -hmm. And how many student teachers have you had over the years? We're trying to count, I think it's between 16 to 18 within my own classroom, but then I've been teacher tutor as well for other students. Then. Um, for I think 12 years in two, within two different school settings. So quite a number of students <laughs> under my belt. <laughs> Absolutely. We'll have a range of, uh, of experiences and we're going to um, all talk to a little bit about some of the experiences that go to making a good teacher. Um, and that's a good teacher throughout the career because we believe that that starts with great experiences as a student teacher. Um, I'm, I think that if I can start by talking about the sort of theoretical background and the context in which we're working. Over the last 30 years in Northern Ireland, we have developed a partnership approach to teacher education. It's been underpinned by the competence framework that was first set up in 1996 and laid out in the Teacher Education Partnership Handbook. In that, the roles and responsibilities of each of the partners was outlined. And I think it's a bit of a pity that that has fallen um, by the wayside. It was revitalised in 2010. And indeed, the Department of Education have a working group looking at that now because it clearly delineates, you know, the expectations of each of the partners and the close working um, relationship that's needed to make that work. More recently, Learning Leaders highlights the importance of developing an excellent teaching workforce. And as it says, a school is only as good or great as its teachers. The policy commitments outlined in Learning Leaders include a commitment to empowering teachers to build on their strengths, a commitment to sharing good practice, a commitment to building learning communities through collaboration, and to building leadership capacity. There are other policy commitments within the document, but those are the ones that I felt were most relevant to student teachers. And I suppose one of the questions that we want to investigate today is how do we facilitate those with students who are starting out on the road to developing excellence as teachers? Because I'm doing the sort of theoretical end of things, I thought I would start off with a question that Corthagan poses. And he asks, what is a good teacher? Is it someone who shows the correct competences that are summarised in standardised lists? Or is it someone who is able to use his or her own unique core qualities and connect them with other aspects that go on in the classroom that reflect the complexities of teaching? There's always been a bit of a tension between academic learning, the theory, and what actually happens in classrooms. And indeed, Shulman, writing in 1998, lists some of the knowledge um, that student teachers and indeed teachers will need to have. But he 
frames that with it in the idea of the complexities of teaching. And he suggests that some but not all of the knowledge that teachers need to have include content knowledge, a general pedagogical knowledge so that they understand classroom management, they understand resources, they understand how to organise learning and that they get that children are individual learners within the situation they find themselves in. That uh, student teachers and teachers need curriculum knowledge, but they also need pedagogical content knowledge where we build on our own professional understanding and think about how to organise the content that we're going to deliver to children and then tailor that to the children in our care in a given class or a given context. That as well as having all the knowledge of content and of pedagogy, the teachers understand the children as learners sitting in front of them, that they understand the developmental stages that those children are at and the characteristics of each child in, in their class that teachers need a knowledge of educational contexts, that that starts with the dynamics in the classroom and group work and paired work, but it also, taking a step back, um, it thinks about that they have to understand the learning environment of the school, the culture of the school, whether there are children with particular needs from a given background, is it an affluent school, is it an inner city school, um, the but then on top of that, the societal priorities within schools and things like what funding is available for schools and what resources are available to those. So he's moving backwards and thinking about the political context in which learning takes place. And then on top of that, to add to the list of things, there's a knowledge about educational lens. What's the purpose of education within our society? And that teachers need to think about the purposes, the values and the philosophical and historical reasons underpinning the choice of education system within which we work. So here in St Mary's, in institutes of higher education that are preparing student teachers, we feel it's really important that students have this theoretical knowledge, that they have a basic understanding of child psychology and development, that they understand the values underpinning education, the philosophy that they can develop their own personal philosophy of education, of the sociology um, of education. So um, the different places where children are going to be coming from, the challenges that they face at home, um, the cultures that are there, um, as well as the pedagogical knowledge that they have. But can I tell you why we want these students to be well informed on these, these melt into insignificance when they walk into a classroom and there's 30 learners sitting in front of them. Okay, so over a hundred years ago, Dewey was already talking about the gap between theory and practice. And I think that Really, we can get past that if we start to think not about what we need, but about how teachers learn. And increasingly, I mean, over the last 40 or 50 years, there's been um, a real understanding that learning about teaching happens in classrooms, where we take that theory and we take the practice and we wed the two together. And in the classroom is where student teachers learn to become teachers. And the two, the theory and the practical knowledge together come to come in place through two things. First of all, through students talking to their teachers by asking them to make explicit the tacit knowledge the teachers have. So why did you group them that way? Why did you do it in that order? What happens if? How can I help that child succeed? And they draw on the vast experience that their host teachers have. So that's one way. Another way is through engaging in critical reflection of their own practice. And unless teachers develop the practice of critical reflection, they stay trapped in their own judgments and biases and their way of doing things. So we really need to problematize this and think, how can I do this better for the children that are sitting in front of me? Increasingly, we need students and indeed the teachers of the future to become problem solvers so that they can see that the issues that are in their classroom um, are there, that they need to examine them, that they can bring other understandings to them so that they can come up with their own solutions. So there's so much going on and that's the theory part over. Now we're going to have a really genuine conversation, I think, about um, how practice works within schools and how we together as a learning community can make great teachers, starting with the student teachers in the classroom. And I'm going to hand over for a minute to Katrina because you're going to talk a little bit about the culture and um, the ethos within a school that can support student teachers coming in. 
Thank you, Claire. Well, I'm going to focus on creating, um, how do you create a school culture within your school that allows for effective school experiences for student teachers? So I'm teaching in post-primary since 1987 and the school that I currently work in, I'm there from 1989. And when I arrived as a newly qualified teacher, but then it was a probation teacher, mm -hmm. our principal then had just left third level education and took principalship of our school. And for the 1980s, she was an extremely innovative thinker. She was talking about reflective practice, a school culture. She was talking about mission statements and core values. And she was talking about looking at how businesses in the private sector carry out critical reflective practice. Mm -hmm. And she was trying to embed that into an education system that was a wee bit stuck, you maybe from the 70s into the, the 80s. So was so amazed at these discussions at staff meetings and the languages that, that was being used. And I trained for four years um, and a BA degree and progressing gradually through the four years. But I never heard of words like mission statement or school culture or emerging or evolving. And so it was all so new to me and I wondered how I was going to fit in. So the principal at the time introduced a model for reflective practice and a critical model of reflective practice. And she brought in a local shirt factory, the management from a local shirt factory to work within our school department. So I'm placing it in a wee bit of context for mm -hmm. you. And then she introduced um, a European business model, the EFQM model. And uh, out of that grew an open door policy where the business sector was saying, the schools are closed, the doors are closed and the gate closes at nine. Open it up, mm -hmm. get it opened up and bring the parents in, bring the local um, business in and bring other educational establishments in. Mm -hmm. And Geraldine didn't need a second invite to do that. She did it very cleverly and very quickly. And then I knew I could fit in with school improvement groups and one was for student placements. Having come out of third level teaching herself, she understood, as Claire alluded to, that there had been a little gap between their college experience and then what happened to them in school. So I shadowed the tutor teacher and sat on the school improvement group for student placement. And immediately we worked on creating a culture and the aspirational thinking, now and it was aspirational, was that student teachers would want to come to our school and that they would like being there and that when they would leave, they would have a very positive experience of the career and, the, and the, what was ahead of them. So to be a host school, we came up with a range of um, factors that would underpin the ethos of a host school. And many of them were about looking at yourself to begin with. And it was about if you're going to be a role model for Claire and her peer group, then you, you have to know what makes a good teacher. You have to demonstrate excellent teaching in your classroom. So we spent a lot of time in those days looking at the lesson plan and looking how to improve the lesson plan and the outcome for the pupils. And as we progressed through the late 80s and early 90s, it was about, you know, having your outcomes on the whiteboard and sharing them with the pupils and sharing the success criteria. And that was all very new and very innovative. And but it was working and it got us thinking. And we did have lots of students over the years. We looked at what makes a good teacher and what made a good teacher in our school in the early 90s was a teacher who was a team player, who shared good practice very openly, who didn't mind their colleagues observing them um, as part of a PRSD system, say for 10 minutes. And some people hadn't been observed in years and years mm -hmm. since they left college. Um, a good teacher was a person who was confident enough to say, look, that didn't work. Yeah. Look, I'm going to try it again. Or they were confident to share that maybe the class didn't do as well in that assessment and that's not their fault. You you can't say the children didn't do well in your assessment. Our principal would tell us that um, because of them. They didn't do well in your assessment because of you. Mm -hmm. So everything was put back on the teacher. And the culture for creating an atmosphere for student teachers was uh, emerging all the time. And a term that came into it as well was dignified workplace. Mm -hmm. yes. So we have, we still carry through dignified workplace, which sits very easily within our own framework of our school ethos. So the dignified workplace applies to everybody that works mm -hmm. in the school, including 
the student teachers when they come in. And we move forward to that where in the early days, I can see how working with student teachers has evolved over the last 25 years. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, 20 years ago, 25 years ago, we were helping them plan their lesson, look at their scheme. And then as you move through the 90s, it was about action planning and some skill development planning. And now our student teachers are looking at comparative data to inform practice. That We spend a lot of time and energy in our school on um, evidence-based practice this year. And this term, we're looking at Rose and Shine's principles of instruction and the Magenta principles. So our student teachers will be exposed to this. Mm -hmm. um, and the administrative side, we're looking at modules and sims that look out for, you know, doing data analytics and how we're going to improve and use the administrative systems to improve the outcomes for the pupils. So I can already see that we would nearly expect now the student to come in with a good solid lesson plan, maybe not a perfect one, but a good solid one. And that the students now of 2023 wouldn't be taught in our school how to write a good lesson plan, but they will be taught about data, anal data analytics and comparative data. But it goes more and beyond that. They, it, the teacher that takes them under their classroom has to be very willing, yeah. has to be very yeah. passionate. Mm -hmm. It's not a job. And we try to get that message through to them. It is a lifelong career. Mm -hmm. I think mean, I'm in the same school nearly 37 years. So it is lifelong and it is, you have to be passionate about it mm -hmm. and you have to, and it's not old fashioned to say, you have to like children, you have to like working with them, but you have to understand them. Yeah. And they're not all perfect. And as Claire also said, the, the student of 2023 is common dealing with adverse trauma. They weren't dealing in the 1980s with adverse trauma. And they're coming and dealing with all the different ranges, like multicultural in your classroom, as Claire said. And that wasn't happening 25 years ago. Yeah. And apart from working with the host teacher, who we have created a culture that is willing, who is sharing, who team teaches, who sits down with the student and chats to them. And really, if things are going wrong for the student, we have an ethos in our school and things have gone wrong with students in our school. But we have an ethos of repair, try and repair. They're on a journey. They're very young. And what I have learned over the years about creating this culture for effective student experience is understand that year one of a BA degree is very different from year four yeah, and very true. different from a class teacher of 10 years mm -hmm. and a class teacher of 37 years. Mm -hmm. So they're on a journey and try and repair with them what's not right. Be their critical friend, but be very sensitive to their needs and be very, very understanding of where they actually are. I think you also have to balance that they are progressing through a degree with a lot of theory work. And the, the, you have to balance that with what you expect them to carry out while they're in your school. And then you have to, to be a good host. You have to understand what do they actually need to know? How much of the SIMS administrative do, administration packages and software do they need? And they, in our school, they have great opportunities because we're a big post primary school that they can shadow different staff that have different responsibilities. So I would definitely say creating a culture has evolved and it's not something that happened overnight. And it started with a very simplistic school improvement group and which we have kept going. And I shadowed for years the teacher tutor and I'm now the teacher tutor and I love it, absolutely love it. Um, but I have very willing heads of department, very willing class teachers and very willing technicians. And that's how these students succeed when they're with us. And it sounds there like everybody in the school is sort of open to um, the students coming in. And that's a very, very welcoming culture yeah, yeah, for students. Um, Claire, that would lead very nicely into you talking about your experiences. Yeah. As a student teacher in school. So. Yeah, just from like a student teacher's perspective, like that is exactly like the dream. Like that's what you want to be going into into it's so important that there is that culture of collaboration and they want to work with the student teacher and that really will help your professional development so much you know I've everyone has had bad experiences my peers and I myself were you know maybe the host teacher doesn't realize you know the extent to which they can progress your um, professional development 
and it can be really really like soul destroying for a student teacher to go in and not have that collaboration and that relationship because it is through relationships and through getting to know the school that you actually can take you know your snippets of your best practice and that's what you're taking with you when you leave your degree you know that's you know where you get your best practice from and even as Claire was saying matching up what you're doing in uni with what you're doing in teaching practice you know it can feel like there is a bit of a gap there but you know seeing these teachers actually act this out this you know this academic literature that we are reading if we, when you actually see it acted out by teachers that's when you realize oh this actually is really relevant one of my best experiences from being out in teaching practice was um back to first year and when i think back to it all the time it really like lifts my spirits a bit when out in teaching practice i had a fantastic teacher who really wanted collaboration and really wanted to work with me and she was excellent at literally saying to me you know sit down and watch me do this you're doing it tomorrow you know that kind of way like instead of go off and do this mark this while i do my lesson and she really made me sit down and actually take notes of what she was doing and things like you know phonics things like that when you're learning that theoretically it's like okay yeah I'll do that yeah but when you actually see somebody doing it and you're thinking to yourself I have to get up and do this it really it, that's when you learn like that's when you really learn it um, and she really then as well when I was doing my lessons on the flip side of that she really sat down and took the time to you know assess me and see where I was at and her feedback was very like little small pointers to work on and then when I got that then she would say the next thing rather than saying this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong and that really was so supportive for me and really boosted my confidence and it built me up little by little to where like when I think back to that placement by the end of it I was singing, dancing, using puppets, everything like your confidence gets so far up and even now that stands to me like when I'm on different placements and I'm thinking gosh I can't do this I think no you can do it you know you just have to get back to that place you know so you know when it works when school experience works it works really well um so that would be one of the more positive aspects of it but I think as well um as I was saying when you don't get a teacher who wants to work with you doesn't see you as an asset it can be quite hard and you feel like you nearly have to prove yourself to them rather than focusing on the children you're kind of focused on them all the time thinking I'll do this to impress them I'll do this to impress them rather than thinking we have to think about the children here you know working together with the teacher for the children is what's so important and as well as that I think a lot of student teachers get bogged down on you know the tutor the tutor visit mm -hmm. you know everything doesn't matter what you do week in week out it's the tutor visit that day what you do that day as if your whole school experience practice is riding on that one visit when really like students need to look at it from a more you know broader view mm -hmm. and holistic that like this is part of your whole academic degree and school experience is just the application of that rather than just this one or two visits is like what your whole degree is writing on it's it's not and you know sometimes that can nearly present like a barrier mm -hmm. for students teachers and kind of pull their focus a wee bit again as I was saying instead of focusing on the students. And I think that's why it's so important you know as a tutor going into a school we mm. ask you know how is the student getting on think but doing? it's more than just you in the classroom how are you contributing to the whole yes, life of the school yeah, you know yeah. and I think that you're quite right a student teacher should think that's it this is it this defines me when really yeah. it's the breadth of experience that you get yeah, from yeah. the teachers and the inclusion within yeah. the school that really helps you yeah. you know um i'm just thinking on that you know um has it been an affirming experience as well when your tutors has come out oh yeah definitely like sometimes you know i'm so aware of sometimes like you need the wee check you know you need that we you know you think overall I'm doing great but there's you know maybe one little aspect that you're totally just missing out you're totally forgetting about and it's so good to get that check that's like oh right okay I never even thought of that or even how you you know structure your lessons and you're thinking I can't understand why they're not getting it or they didn't remember what I did last week or whatever but the student teachers just give you this new perspective sometimes that lets you say like oh that's why and repeating things and stuff like that just because of the experience they have. And I think you know that combination of the, your teacher giving you that feedback, your tutor yeah. and quite often principals or, or teacher tutors from schools will, you know, will come in and sit and assess, uh, assess mm -hmm. mentor students because yeah. you know it's that sort of sense I think when you feel when somebody's watching you they're assessing you mm -hmm. when 
you know, you talked, Katrina, there about the culture of open doors and people coming in yeah. and sitting down. Mm -hmm. We can learn so much from yeah. each other, you know. Yeah. Claire, in a nutshell, because one of the other things that really strikes me mm -hmm. is I think schools can forget how nervous students are. Yes, I know. I know. Yeah, that's another thing. Yeah. Um, do you know when you have to get up in front of 30 kids, knowing that you have the support in the background of somebody saying that, you know, you are doing well, this is something you can work on rather than somebody who's, you know, doesn't want to know, do you know, kind of thing. You know, you feel like everyone in the room then is against you nearly type of thing, you know. Claire, I'm going to butt in and tell you about my very first day on teaching practice, <laughs> which is um, I was so past myself that I was going to be standing in front of a group of children. First year in St Mary's, an IT graduate from here. And uh, I jumped in the car, excited to go to my placement school. And I, I was just so tunnel visioned, literally, that I drove out in front of a police car. <laughs> they slammed the brakes on. It was like, put the anchors on. I could have put my hand out and touched their bonnet. That's how close they were. But I was still so focused on getting to my class that I just drove on. I waved at them and drove on. And then as I arrived in my placement school, so did the blue light the police car. <laughs> <laughs> and they got out and had a little chat with me in the playground. So uh, on a very first day experience is whenever you're rocking up to a group of 30 children. Yeah. 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 Nerves can do a whole pile of things yeah. to all of us. Yeah. And I think, I mean, I think that's one side of it. You know, schools can be very welcoming, mm -hmm. but until a student's in and part of that school culture, it's terrifying. Yeah. You know, I've had students this week who are starting out next week panicking because they want they really are putting so much emphasis this is the heart and soul of their course this is what they want to do you know well, but on my very first teaching practice I was leaving St Mary's so it was the end of my <laughs> career I I honestly didn't have a great experience we there was about four students in the school and we had a lovely cupboard that we were allowed to boil a kettle in and things like that we were totally excluded from the staff room from from life of the school. So, and the teacher was a very quiet soul, obviously not very like myself, um, didn't communicate very well, head in her books when I was teaching, very little feedback for me, um, primary two class. And I just, I, I just did not know how to self-reflect very well because you're usually very down on yourself yeah. and hard on yourself and I I don't know how I got through it but I did yeah. but life really turned around from year two on and for I think, me. You know that's what I think many teachers are happy to have a student but aren't quite sure or confident enough mm -hmm. To, yeah. You know, you've talked about being a critical friend yes. and the value that is where somebody reflects back to you. Mm -hmm. This worked well. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the other thing is students are so critical. You know, I did yes. this wrong, I did that wrong. Yeah. When on the whole, the majority of it worked. And as you said, it's just thinking about, think about your time management. Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. A little repair. That's a lovely way to put it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So thank you, Claire. That's lovely. Jim, can I turn to you? You know, and I'm sort of thinking we're talking about how to make a great teacher. And we said about it starting here. And there's so many issues that you have to think about as a principal, the students coming in. Would you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. Um, I suppose part of it, uh, the, the, the journey begins, Claire, when the letter drops from you <laughs> <laughs> into school to say, could you please accommodate and facilitate uh, our students um, in their practice? And of course, we all know the letter tells us which year group they're in and which subject specific uh, topic they're studying at the college. So that, that begins the conversation in most schools. Um, about, OK, well, we could take two, three, four students and where best will we place them? So there may be a misconception from students, you know, that, that they are just airdropped into uh, any particular classroom uh, just for convenience. But actually, there's there are a number of layers goes on in, in relation to how do we place these teachers? Where do we place them? Uh, we have to be, be cognizant of the teachers in classrooms where actually they may have mentored and guided a student the year before. And we can't shy away from the fact that when teachers do this, if they do it correctly and do it well, it's a huge extra piece of work for them on top of their normal job. Mm -hmm. So we would have discussions in our senior team and with our teacher tutor in school around um, which class and which teacher would best suit the needs of the student who's coming to us. A, from a subject specific point of view, for example, things like if you teach, if you're a PE teacher or in post primary, if you're a tech teacher, you're assigned very much to your department. In primary, we are expected to do all of those things. 
that actually we may have a music teacher maybe in our school who could mentor someone in teaching curriculum music or PE, um, all of those more practical subjects that whenever you're a teacher uh, of a longer period of time like me with grey hair and you may have forgotten how to teach those uh, more intricate um, subject specific things. It's always good then to say well actually we'll place you, you're a music student, we'll place you with a music specific teacher. Flip side of that conversation could also be it's wonderful we have a music student coming to our school and oh my goodness yeah where can we use them and, and how will we get that uh, student or or reflect the school reflecting on the staff development needs of the actual teaching team and someone having said feeding back to the senior leaders of the school well actually I would like a little bit of help or development in teaching yeah. curriculum music or curriculum PE and that's wonderful we have a fourth year music or PE student coming in we'll bring you in and actually that role should uh, fit hand in glove for the teacher allowing and mentoring the student who's coming in but actually the student's coming with a high skill set here yeah. and they can bring that yeah they can bring that to that teacher so there's a, a number of different layers um, that that go on in relation to placing the student in the class and um, I suppose uh, we have expectations and it's lovely to hear you know your um, kind of timeline and how you have changed the role of teacher tutor and Definitely. and uh, and and the expectation level I have to say as a teacher tutor and now as a principal I have found that there's a slightly different expectation level and, and it's not always positive yeah. to be truthful um, I, I know students I think now that everything has progressed and, and we're not in the old days of file blocks and writing our own lessons yeah. and so on and so forth, um, there's nearly an expectation now of students who, when they arrive on placement, are saying, can you give me my schemes? Can you give me my planning? Yeah. You know, as opposed to, OK, can we sit down and talk about, you know, what is the learning going to look like over the next few weeks whenever you're going to be with us? What, what are the expectations of the learning? So I think whenever students are going into schools, um, there, there should be an expectation that actually we need to have these discussions as opposed to just tell me what I'm going to do. And in fact, that's one of the things, you know, I've just been going through with students uh, who are going out in the next couple of weeks that there are, you know, what ex they can expect from their teacher, but then the responsibilities they have, you know, it's this idea of rights and responsibilities and it's outlined quite nicely in both the Teacher Education Partnership Handbook and Learning Leaders. You know, if you're going into a classroom, you should go in with an attitude that says, what can I do to help? It should You should be going in and thinking, how can I become a better teacher? And if you give me advice to that effect, I need to do something about it. But as well as that, you know, I'm saying to students, the teacher's first responsibility is to the children in their class. And that means that you have to go in with a willingness and an openness and a readiness to learn and a readiness to work and bring things rather than saying, what can I get out of this? You know, and I think that, you know, when you're, I hope that when you're talking about that, it's a small number as opposed it to is, the It is, it absolutely is the minority. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I think it's something it that you shouldn't something skirt happened. around yeah. either. Um, I would be hopeful that when when students come to school that they they come with an openness to learn uh, that they come with an openness to as you say the teacher's responsibility is to the children however um, if teachers if if school leadership teams are working appropriately with teachers they should know the expectation level um, i know it's outlined in the competencies that uh, are received from the college um, but teacher tutors you know, who who in larger schools have the opportunity maybe to go into support and to mentor. Maybe don't know that as well as, you know, the college do or the students do, you know, so uh, making that uh, probably a little bit more explicit because students will come and say, yes, we know what we're supposed to do. And and then schools may be sitting saying, well, actually, that that's wonderful. But, you know, yeah. where, where are we going to steer you? Where are we going to guide you? Um, or Jim, maybe because sometimes the handbooks are so thick and yeah. Yeah, the teacher skims through it or they don't yeah. read them all. Yeah. But um, definitely for Claire's peer group and those that are just graduating, when the student comes in with some of their own resources, their own ideas, mm -hmm. their lesson plan, mm -hmm. whether it's perfect or not, nobody expects it to no. be perfect. I find the teachers are much more willing to share. Absolutely. So it's a two-way learning process. Mm -hmm. 
And our staff are very keen to have students because they think they learn an awful lot from them. And I do agree with you. It is extra workload. But it, once you get your students started on their journey, um, as you said, Helena, it can help you in your own classroom to do yeah. things, other things yeah. within, yeah. within the time frame. Claire and uh, all of the cohorts who are coming with you and behind you, be very aware of the fact that when you step into a building, this could be a possible yeah. form or work uh, place. workplace. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we all want our best foot forward. You know, That's go true. in with yeah. your smile. Yeah. Go in with um, where people on that staff team are thinking, God, isn't it wonderful? Wouldn't it be great, actually, if a job came up here, yeah. Claire would be a great yeah. asset to our team. I've, I've heard the saying that in fourth year, it's the longest interview of your life. <laughs> <laughs> and third year. <laughs> and second year, you know. But the flip side of that is the student has to have a positive experience and leave saying, I would love, love, to, I would love to work there. there. Yes. I would love yeah, to yeah. work here. And very often they do say, oh, I would love to work here. Yes. And that is how it's measured mm -hmm. as well as the other, you know, the save you were yeah. talking about. That and that's partnership and action, Katrina. You know, I love that because we're sort of, we're, yeah. in some ways I sort of feel um, we as, you know, um, initial teacher education are sending students out and we can see the benefits that students get, but sometimes we don't see the benefits that schools get. So it's oh, lovely yeah. for you, yeah. to, you know, to be seen. Yeah, we've gone after some of the students that we've had, <laughs> and, you know, and to get them back yeah. and to give them yeah. some more experience. And, you know. and it, it, I suppose just to close from a, a primary school perspective, um, what I really would be thinking is there's still a little bit of work to be done with teachers actually in school. You know, we, we are all as teachers, we continue on our journey of learning and it is lifelong and we will never stop until uh, um, uh, forever. But um, what I would be saying is there's still a little bit of work. I don't know who addresses that little bit of work in relation to the role of the mentor teacher uh, to give those teachers who are facilitating these students a little bit more help or a little bit more focus um, boundaries under which they can push to get school improvement because um, only when those conversations happen can learning actually change you yes. know can can the practice improve you know can the can classroom observations get better can assessment come better and and all of that is for the benefit of the children and again that's bringing it back to the partnership role you would like to see us doing more to support the teachers who are accepting students to help them mentor the student teachers I think it, if if there was a conversation, you know, w with uh, mentor teachers or even with the teacher tutor where that could be brought back to the schools, you know, that um, this is what we expect from our students. And, you know, this is what you can talk to them about. Yeah. Here are some aspects of the role that you can challenge them on. You know. I do think there, as you say, there's work to be done. Katrina, you mentioned the handbooks and I know pre-COVID mm -hmm. I developed handbooks and then realised they were too big. So that's something that we will take on board and work on in the, in the, the next number yeah. of months or years. <laughs> Helena, you've had a whole range of students yeah. and, you know, they sort of talked around school ethos and we've talked about the students' experience. Mm -hmm. What about the teacher and, you know, in the classroom with the, the students coming in, you know? In general, honestly, Yes, we'll, we'll, you know, there are some pitfalls, but 99.9% .9 of it, I would take a student every year. Yeah. I really would. So you have I a heart of the lion. Benefits, <laughs> but the benefits far outweigh. They really, really do. Um, you know, I believe at the bare minimum, no, there's never a teacher in the world that ever gets everything done on their tick list that day. OK, it's an extra set of hands within your classroom. In the primary school, I could be saying, would you take that wee reading group for me? Could you do this? Could you do that? That's all, you know. It's all learning. It's all learning. It's all practical experience. My advice for any young student coming in to any classroom is roll up your sleeves, become part of the team. The within that one classroom, there are students, there's a teacher, there's classroom assistants possibly, there are uh, withdrawal teachers, there are all sorts of people within that one classroom that you are now a member of that team and become that team. Don't stick your head in your file, get your eyes out, get your hands ready. For the teacher, what I would say would be have faith, 
room wasn't built in a day. Mm -hmm. These are young people who it's our job to nurture. Yeah. Um, as we're in a nurturing profession. So the pleasure that it, you will get out of seeing a young teacher develop is, is, has no bounds. Um, and again, remind that teacher, they may be a leader, but they're in a team. Mm -hmm. They're in a team. And I think the overriding word when I think about um, student teachers coming into classroom is share. Mm -hmm. So share good practice. So those young teachers can share good practice with you. I've learned so much over the years of young teachers mm -hmm. and vice versa. So no one knows it all. And we learn from each other. And sharing means resources. Sharing means time. Sharing means responsibility, responsibility and the pupils. Mm -hmm. Because an awful lot of teachers are quite Thanks. selfish about their class and, mm -hmm. and don't like to give up the, uh, their time, the teaching time. And that's very difficult. So sharing your time. Time for being with your student and, and nurturing them. But the, on the flip side of that, you're getting more time also. Mm -hmm. If you use it really wisely, then what I find that I get is more time with my students. Yeah. Because when my teachers are teaching, um, I'm with a group. And that's a joy for any teacher. Instead of being the leader and having to go around all the groups, mm -hmm. this time you may choose to sit with one group. This time you may choose to sit with two groups and be in but you're not, you get, you get so much more um, insight into the children's learning and where they are. And I, I do find the time issue, that it's a double-edged sword. Yes. But for me, looking on the bright side, I do feel that I get so much more in class time with, with my children. Um, and obviously you need to then have those conversations after school, really. Um, but they're good professional discussions that you're having with your teachers. Um, as well as that, you know, you get a good student. And again, going back to what you were saying about bringing things to the table. I mean, I don't know how many times I've said, you wouldn't stick that on my pen drive. <laughs> you know, they come up with great, modern, innovative ways of teaching a thing that you've taught for 10 years, yeah. which is just lovely. And it shines a brand new, bright light on things so and so creative and give you great ideas um obviously relationships is if you're if you're going to look at the negative side and again going back to placement of the student teacher you know i think the key thing there is relationships Re relationships within the classroom is so important because a classroom has to be a tightly oiled ship you know and um i find when 99.9 percent .9 of times when things don't go right it's about relationships mm -hmm. you know and it's about expectations not being that clear um can i clarify are you talking about relationships between the student and the student teacher and the teacher yes. are you talking about the student teacher and the pupils i think well yes both but i think when things really m may go wrong for a student it is with the teacher in general i agree and i'm interested in that because you know you mentioned there that teaching uh, the, the, the one thing that really strikes me and i've been doing this role for many years is that teachers want students to succeed that they nurture them yes. and they will protect them they're another baby <laughs> <laughs> you know? And can you go on a little bit, you know, where is that relationship breaking down? Well, you know, some, some host tutors, I don't think, realise the role that they actually have when taking on a student teacher. They don't realise the time that the students yeah, ha think. have to be yeah. given teaching time. They might yeah, have they agree time. before they've thought about it nearly yeah. type of thing. Yeah, some 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 teachers want to make clones of themselves. This is the way we do this. Whereas if they go in with an open mind and, and, and get, you know, and, and 
go in knowing that they're going to learn things also, then you can learn from your student. It's about collaborating. Yeah. No, I'm struck again because, you, you know, you, you've hit um, a sort of very important point and it's the relationship. If there's an expectation from one side that, you know, a student will have prepared something and come in ready to teach yeah. and they arrive in and go, I didn't get that done. There's that sort of sense of disappointment and yes. th yeah. that can fray relationships. Well, I quickly. think you're, you're on the money because work ethic from a pu from a student is make or break. It is. Yeah. It is make or break for the teacher's opinion yeah. of that student. And once the it maybe is sullied a bit, it's muddy water and it's very difficult to. I had a conversation with one of my colleagues who's going to be going out, um, you know, as a tutor to visit students in schools. And I was saying the student had a little bit of difficulty last year and she said, look, if the student's a worker, I'll bend over backwards to help her. But if she's lazy, I don't have any time. And I think that's probably, you know, you as a principal, you're sitting smiling, Jim. I'll give one small interjection about a, another thing that I've just noticed. Um, and again, it is the minority. I say that very much caveated, um, is that everything is now digital. Mm -hmm. It's very easy accessed and that is wonderful. And we should use technology. You know, I embrace technology 100%. But what I would be saying is uh, avoid the pitholes. Say to the students, avoid the pitholes of if you can't get it on the test website, if I can't get my, my planning on the test website or my resource off Twinkle or, or whatever it is, um, that is not good enough. Yes. You know, lifting a digital resource just because you think it maybe hits the mark on the learning and you do not make any effort whatsoever to adapt it, convert it, yeah. and meet the needs of your children who are in your care. And they are your responsibility for the time that you are teaching in that room, be it a, a shorter amount of time in first year or almost full time expectation by the time you're in fourth, because you're in two months time, you'll be standing there with your name on top of a registration yeah. form that you, you tailor to the needs of your children. Yeah, I agree because anyone can go on Twinkle and yeah. get a resource. Like anyone who studies law can come in yeah. and attempt to teach that. But yeah, I know what you mean. It has to be for the children, not just 100%. for the sake of having a lesson. Use the technology. Yeah. It's not about us trying to say reinvent the wheel but it's yeah. to enhance the learning it's yeah. not the learning yeah. and this all comes back to the and if i dare say it the theoretical knowledge that you've been gathering you know the pedagogical context and so on and applying that in practice and teachers do it so implicitly it's so embedded with what they do you know um but Alina, i'm really interested you just talking about the time because that's one thing that i think schools are you know for a number of years there we've got 15 lessons we can't let you know third and fourth year students do 15 lessons and we've changed that terminology and I hope it will work by saying, you know, that we want to move students to teaching for sustained periods of time. Now, this is primary schools, Katrina, mm -hmm. but you know that they should be teaching for whole mornings, um, moving towards whole days. Because I think one of the other things that we don't want is that they, you know, use the word airdrop in. All of a sudden there's these lessons that appear and the, the, yeah. the student teacher has this idea that they can swan in and get everything organised while the teacher takes hold. You know, you're going to become the person that in two months time, you know, is in charge of the whole class. Do you think that's going to be problematic for schools? Uh, well, it'll be a change. So change sometimes. Teachers are are habitual animals. <laughs> so that might be difficult for some. However, I think that's a brilliant idea because I know as a young teacher, even now as an old teacher, um, transitions is not an easy thing to manage. And children, you know, there's fast finishers, there's slow finishers, there's, you know, we need, and it's about making that judgment. Um, right, time's up now. OK, let's clear away. We have to move on to the next thing or or getting them from A to B down to the dinner hall or to, you know, somewhere else within the school. So I think that'll be excellent. I really do. The other the other thing that I did want to mention about was feedback for students. Yes, that's a very, very important one. Because, again, that has caused problems over the years. And it's about having that lovely culture of learning and understanding. Um, I think slow and steady wins the race. I think setting targets on a weekly basis. I think being very clear on your expectations um, and, and, and praise where praise is due. Yeah. 
you know, and not and 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 when everyone knows, like every PRSD that has ever happened, we know what the person's coming in to see. So that needs to be agreed before every lesson. And I think that's something that has fallen yeah. through or by the wayside, sort of. Um, the other thing is there's nothing wrong with helping the teacher while you're in the room. Mm -hmm. So interjecting. You know, I would always make it clear to my students that don't worry if I join in, I, I will join in. <laughs> so don't worry about that. I'm there to help you. And, and I will, when I'm teaching my lessons, I might say, what do you think, miss? And, you know, and yeah. always drawing them in anyway. So, you know, it's about... Well, that's beautifully reflecting the collaboration and the sharing of good practice that I spoke about from the early leaders at the beginning, you know, so that's... I, I like Helena's point about... Um, the host teacher wants their student to do well. And I yes. think if the students in your college understood that from yes. year one to four, we, we get so protective mm -hmm. when they come into the school. Mm -hmm. And when they're due a visit, oh, we, meet, we meet the lecturer at the front door and we try and delay it. It's and somebody senior it. speaking to the class, <laughs> yeah. we behave well now yes. for this observation. Yeah. And then we're all dying to know, oh, how did you get mm -hmm. on? And, and mm -hmm. how did you do? And, yeah. and that's a reality check as well for the tutors that, you know, I think that we have to remember that the vast majority of students are so self-critical and they're thinking, I didn't do that right and I didn't do that right. And one of the things that we have to take a step back and say is, how do you think it went? Because while I'm thinking, you know, they didn't manage the behaviour there well, they didn't manage that well, they're going, you know, such and such didn't say this and I thought that was, you know, it can be a very different agenda and it's sometimes starting with where the students are, you know, and that's that's something that we're working. And sometimes your, your first tutor visit anyway, I find like it does, it shapes your whole perception of yourself because you're doing your practice up until then you're like, I think it's going well, maybe it's not, maybe it is and it really helps you be like, Right. Yes, it is going well or no, it isn't, you know, and up until then you're nearly you are reflecting, but you're kind of thinking to yourself, am I doing being too positive about myself? Am I being too critical on myself? Like, it's good to have that kind of fixed point where you're like, no, right, this is where I have to go from here, you know. And I think that's why it's so important you're with a teacher who can say you're doing this really well and you could think about, you know, for improvement. I'm very aware time wise um, and we'd just love to finish up with a couple of questions that have come in um, from those who may be listening in. Um, and thank you very much indeed for those who forwarded on some questions. Um, Katrina, there was one there that came up. Can I ask, are there key personnel tasked in your school with engaging students other than the class teacher? Oh, yeah. In a post-primary school, um, you know, we're so fortunate that we have staff that has roles of, you know, role of responsibilities outside the classroom teaching. So, for example, last year I had a PGCE student who was doing part of her dissertation um, on adverse trauma. So I teamed her up with the child, the designated teacher for child safety. Mm -hmm. and she shadowed her and talked to her and learnt an awful lot from her. Um, very often if they work on a practical subject like home economics or technology, the technicians are very useful. Yeah. The teacher may not have the time to show them how to work the big machinery and technology, but the technician mm -hmm. who works there mm -hmm. to after five o'clock is definitely very willing to show them. And heads of gear in a, in a post-primary school are very important because they are the pastor link between the subject teacher, the form teacher and the senior leadership team. And it is really useful for student teachers to get involved in the pastoral side of things as well. So, yes, the designated teacher, the technicians and um, the heads a year, as well as shadowing the form teacher to get that pastoral um, side as well as to their teaching, you know, and understanding the children and where they're coming from. But you know what's lovely there? You have actually shown how the whole school comes together yeah. to support a student yeah. to become a great teacher. Yes. And I think that doesn't stop with mm -hmm. a, a student teacher. And including the caretaker who helps them put up the chairs yeah. for their, yeah. well, if they've been given responsibility <laughs> for the morning prayer. And, and the caretaker's very useful. He'll help you set up the hall. Lovely. Thank you very much. <laughs> Another lovely question was, um, what do you think the pupil experience is? You know, having a student teacher in the classroom, Helena, you talk there about getting to work with groups and so on. Can you, could you talk a little bit about what you think the student, yeah, or sorry, the pupil experience is? Yeah, I think actually they've got to say it as a very positive thing. Number one, you've got this young little hip trendy person coming into your school. <laughs> the kids love that. The kids, the kids are naturally curious. So they want to get to know you. They want to 
befriend you, they want to impress you. So there's that side of it too. There's the side where they see their teacher in a very different role because we're the supporter, we're the classroom assistant, we're the person that sits with them and discusses their work, which I, you, you don't get to do enough mm -hmm. as a teacher, you know, you're watching behaviour and, you know, doing all sorts. Actually have a whole other insight to the children Absolutely, then. Absolutely, because you're sitting with them. You're sitting with them and, or you, you can you have the luxury of sitting back watching them mm -hmm. and enjoying them, enjoying learning which is lovely. Also, with all the lovely um, resources and the new, you know, exciting lessons that, that they're getting presented with, they have a great time. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. We, do, we had a student last year who um, was in one particular class and our PE lead realised that actually they were an athletics coach and athletic competitor. And we switched our athletics programme into the Antrim Forum to use the proper tracks and the, yes. all of the she came and taught. So all of a sudden, this student teacher who was only known to a uh, one class of 30, all of a sudden was the expert among an entire key stage of children. Yeah. You know, bring yourself. Yeah, bring That's yourself. Lovely. Yeah. That's bring lovely. Yourself. But it's lovely as well that your school facilitated that experience for both the student teacher and the pupils, mm -hmm. you know, so again, a win-win situation, yeah. you know. Yeah. Jim, I'm going to go on and say, you know, there's another question here and you've sort of mentioned it a little bit, but what do you hope students will gain from placing a student with a particular teacher? You know, you talk there about the layers and, uh, you know, is there something particular you could come at? From well, I, I was really hoping that by the time they leave, they feel more equipped. Um, I remember I talked about my first day in teaching practice. I remember seeing opening a, a Sims sheet and seeing my name as the responsible adult on the top on my very first day teaching. And in that world, I didn't know what I didn't know. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah, so I would be really, really hopeful that whenever students come at whatever point in their in their career progression they're doing, that they'll, they'll walk out of our school feeling, well, actually, I felt supported. I could have the conversations um, with my um, my host teacher, with the teacher tutor. In primary schools, it might be a little bit easier that the principal is involved in those conversations. You know, um, bring yourself, be yourself, learn, you know. And enjoy it all. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but you've heard that sometimes that there's so much work going on that schools are places, that can be places of joy and so frustration. <laughs> but, but you know, there, there are many, many more good things happening yeah. in schools than the other way around. Claire, I'm going to finish off with a question to you. And, and this is an interesting one. How do the experiences offered and the relationships forged on school placement influence the students emerging and developing identity as a practitioner. And that's really interesting because you've sort of nearly given us from the school's point of view what you hope they'll walk out with, but you know. Yeah, it just, it reminds me of what um, Helena had said about, you know, when the host teacher and the student teacher work together and the time that that unlocks. But she said about, um, you know, host teachers being like, oh, I'll have that resource or that lesson. It really makes you realise the potential you have and makes you realise, you know, I am a teacher too and this is what I'm actually going to do. I'm not just a wee student anymore. And just being on school experience it lets you kind of get all these ideas of this best practice and what is the best practice. That's why it's so good that we do it over four years and not just one big block, mm -hmm. that you get a different variety of schools and you see different practice and you can take what is best practice because the schools model it for you. But then also you get highlighted to you what your best practice is, you know, with your host teacher and your teacher tutors, they highlight to you what you are doing well. Mm -hmm. So uh, with that alongside the experience that you've got and what you think, yeah, that was good and this was good. You come out of university with this nearly like a lot under your belt of like, right, this is what looks good and this is what isn't good, you know? Yeah. So that's what I think. You and I'm very aware as well, just as you talk there about that, and you know, that question about the developing identity, I'm seeing more and more, you know, students do a placement and then they have time to reflect. And we talked earlier on, not, not here, but um, elsewhere about postgraduate. And I mean, I did a postgraduate and it took me a long time to process many things, but that time to reflect in between placements mm -hmm. um, and then 
students are coming in and going, I was working with children from underprivileged backgrounds. What have I learned there? Mm -hmm. Children with adverse, you know, childhood trauma. How can I support them? I'm working with high flyers. How can I encourage and develop those? You know, and that starts to allow students to develop their own philosophy of teaching, as I yeah. talked about earlier on. <laughs> you know, but it's lovely how we can see from the conversation we've had here today each of us is really um, important in the formation of the teachers of the future. And I mean, I thank you so much for the, the job that you're doing and for taking part in this conversation. And um, thank you for the most people who have chosen to listen to us today. It's been an absolute delight and uh, has given us much to think about. So thank you very much. <laughs>